Hello, my name is Carrie Lentz, and I'm the District Vice President for Edmonton East at TD Canada Trust. TD is very proud to sponsor Eric's new women's chapter of the Career Mentorship Program. This program will feature a series of modules designed with women in mind for professional growth and personal wellness. Please check back each month for new and exciting installments. Enjoy. Very fortunate in Canada to have registered accounts. Um, the three, uh, you know, common ones that we talked about is RESPs, so Registered Education Saving Plan, or RSPs, so Registered Retirement Saving Plan, and TFSAs, Tax-Free Savings Account. So first, we're going to talk about RESPs because that's a little different than the other two. So RESPs, as the name suggests, like I said, it's Registered Education Savings Plan. So it's to save for your child's uh, post-secondary education. Um, when you're making contributions to it, government would also contribute a part of that. And how do you figure out how much government would contribute? It's, it's easy. It's on CRA website. You can you know, kind of go through. It's really user-friendly that way. Um, they'll kind of tell you based on your income and your personal um, you know, situations, how much you can qualify for and, and stuff like that. But it's important we figure it out. Um, and then let's say you're putting $50 a month towards your child's education for 16 years because they're two years old right now. Um, and you have contributed, let's say, 10000 just to get the number easy. 10000 is your contribution. 2000 let's say, is the government grant. And the other 2000 is the growth because you invested in, you know, a low-risk fund, so maybe 2000. Now what happens when your child turns 18 and goes into an eligible post-secondary institution is they can withdraw all of that 14,000, of course, given how many years they need it for, so it's kind of divvied up in three or four years. Um, the 10,000 that you had initially contributed, of course, no taxes on that because it's your own money. The 4,000, the government grant and the growth, it's so all together two and two, that is taxed. Now the good news is because uh, is because at the age of 18, um, you know you're barely making any money. You're probably doing some part-time work. You probably end up paying little to no taxes. So you know you've saved for your child's education, the government grant, and the growth. All of that portion is little to no taxes. So that's the idea, the sheer spirit behind RESP. Now, talking about RRSPs and tax-free savings account, um, RRSPs stand for Registered Retirement Savings Plan. So as the name suggests, really to save for your retirement. Um, contribution, and this is the coolest part about RRSP. This really makes me happy. So let's say you contributed $1,000 to an RRSP and your income for the year is 30000 Okay. So what it does when you're filing your taxes is it reduces your income from 30000 to 29000 because you made the $1,000 contribution towards RRS. So technically, you end up saving taxes on that $1,000. If you're in a 33% bracket, you're saving about $333. So that's, you know, like I said, that's my favorite part about it. Um, and then you know, whatever you have contributed, it can grow based on what you put it into. So range of investment options. It could be a guaranteed investment certificate, which is very, um, you know, there's a fixed rate. Um, it doesn't give you as much interest, but it's guaranteed. And then there are mutual funds and stocks and, you know, all those uh, fun stuff that it can have within an RRSP. Now, tax-free savings account, um, it's to basically save money for anything. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be retirement or education or even buying a car or going on a vacation or retirement either. You can use it to save for anything that you like. Um, it The good news with tax-free savings account is let's say you put in $1,000 into a tax-free and you invested in a really good fund and it actually made you another $1,000 in the year. You don't pay taxes on that thousand. So that's so cool. Now, if you think about it, if you're investing that $1,000 outside tax-free saving account, you will pay taxes on that $1,000 because technically it's an income. But because it's within tax-free savings account, you're not going to pay taxes on the And I, I love that part about tax-free savings. So first off, before you go uh, head out to a bank or a financial institution to do this, know your contribution limits. It's very important to know what your contribution limit is and do not ever exceed this. 
So how do you know your contribution limit? Couple options. If you have filed your taxes in the past, you would have received that yellow paper. It's called a notice notice of assessment from the government. It kind of gives you a breakdown of what your tax free savings account and what your RRSP um, limit limits are. If you have never filed your taxes um, and you have access to CRA website, you know, like a login account, you can see it there. If you don't even have that, it's called CRA. They'll help you with it. They'll help you to understand what your limits are. Now, just to give you an idea on how the limits work. So in 2020, the limit for RSP contribution in Canada was 18% of your previous year's income. So if in 2019 you made 30,000, your contribution limit for the age of, uh, for the year 2020 would have been $5,400. Now these limits, they can actually be carried forward. So if you do not, did not do it last year, you can actually do it this year or going forward. So that's, that's, that's really good. Um, what also um, is important to know is if you are working and you have an employer's pension plan, you want to keep a tab on that as well because sometimes they have a portion that goes towards your RSPs as well. So when you're trying to find out your limit, you want to keep that in mind as well because you'll minus that portion literally from your contribution limit to figure out how much you can contribute. For a TFSA, however, it's you know the limit is set by government and it's the same for every Canadian. So for the year 2020, it was 6,000. For the year 2021, they actually just uh, announced it, I think last week, it's also 6,000. So let's say you came to Canada in the year 2019 um, and you've been more than 18, 18 years old. Um, your limit will be um, you know, 6,000 and 6,000, so 12,000 from 2020 and 2021. So it's important to kind of know that and figure it out. Now, if you've been in Canada since 2009, because that's when the program started, your overall contribution limit, and of course, more than 18, year, uh, more than 18 years of age, your total contribution limit would be 75,500 minus, of course, any uh, contributions that you make. So that's you know a lot of uh, you know, numbers going there, but it's important you, you know yours before you head up to May. With tax-free savings account, withdrawals are not taxed. So, you know, in our earlier example, when we were saying, you know, contributing $1,000 to tax-free savings account, if you take that $1,000 plus your $1,000 gross, not taxed, because you're not getting anything back when you're putting money into a tax rate. Whereas an RSP, because remember in our earlier example, when you're putting $1,000, you're actually saving taxes, so 33%, $333 in taxes. When you actually take the money out of an RRSP, you will be taxed. The good news and the idea behind RRSP is retirement, remember? So when we're using, when, you, when we're withdrawing money at retirement, we're probably making little to no money. So you'll end up paying again, little to no taxes. That's the entire idea is you save for your retirement when you're making really good money and get that tax, you know, that really nice check from the government back. And when you're retiring, you can take that money out, with, you know, paying very little to no taxes, depending on how much income you're making. Now, the the other thing that's that's my favorite about RRSPs is the program called Home Buyers Plan. So if you're buying your first eligible home in Canada, you can uh, withdraw from your RRSP up to $35,000 without paying taxes. So let's say you have $35,000 saved in an RRSP, you can take that out without paying taxes, buy your home, and then pay back within 15 years. So, you know, if we're buying a home worth 200,000, we have put 20,000, you know, we've saved 20,000 in our RRSP. By the way, that money has to sit in there for at least three months before you can use it. So let's say it's been sitting there for six months and we take that money out. We don't have to pay taxes. We can use it to buy a home and we have 15 years to pay back. So that's really, really cool. And if it's yourself and your spouse, um, it's actually 35, 35, 6, 70. That's really, really cool. Um, and you know, just, just remember that option is available. It's a really cool option. I you know always recommend for my customers. What you have to understand though, is there are a few criteria that you have to meet. And how do you know if you qualify? Really easy. Go on Google 
and just type uh, T1036. I think that's the form number. And it will take you to a form where it will ask you like six questions and kind of tell you if you're eligible for it. So, you know, you can actually get to know this even sitting at home. You really don't have to go to a bank.